Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Hamilton, Ohio, to visit with my good buddy Scott Whitaker. Now, some of you may know Scott as the creator of the Dynamat sound deadening material, but Scott's also a designer, builder, and a hardcore car guy. Today we're going to look at a couple of his creations, the fabulous Dynasport and the somewhat gnarlier Dynaliner. But in my book, they're both just plain dynamite. Check them out. Hey Scott, how you doing man? Very good. Good Thank to see you. you. Always good to see you and your cars. I, I love what you build and you build such wild stuff. This, this is your Dynaliner 32 Coupe. But this, which looks like, you know, a, I don't know, 50 year old Bonneville car. But this car is how old? Three years old. Three years old. <laughs> so you made it to look this way, which, which I think is amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a Brookville body? It's a Brookville Coupe? Yeah, it's a, right? it's a, it was a brand new steel, Brookville three window coupe, which they make a reproduction, uh, several reproduction mm -hmm. Ford bodies. But um, they've just started doing the coupe recently, <laughs> haven't they? Yeah, actually, they they introduced uh, three years ago when I brought this out. I I actually had to assemble this this car, the sheet metal and the wood and all, but uh, but I got all the parts from Brookville. Now what do you, so what did you put it on for a frame? Is that 30, a thirty two frame? Thirty two rails, um, but all custom cross members, the rail is kicked up at mm -hmm. the firewall, pinched severely, kicked up in back, uh, try to get that tall axle under there. You've done a lot of period look on stuff. I mean, the, the, the brakes uh, look period, but they've also, they look kind of modified. Well, uh, they are both. Uh, they're reproduction 40 Ford brakes. And, and same for the grill, because I'm looking at this grill going, that, I recognize it, but I don't recognize it. It's it, a yeah. It, well, it's a, a little bit of familiar and a little bit of uh, made up. It's it's actually a hemisphere, like a spun half of a ball. Yeah. Th and it was then cut in half, so you got the top and the bottom of uh, when you split it with some radius panels that give you the um, sides. These are 32 Ford grill teeth. Um, what a lot of work, and what then a with great the, look. And with a crank hole, it looks pretty authentic, like it came <laughs> off of somebody's you track. Had go, you had to go find a crank hole for yeah, it, right? Yeah, but the inspiration really was like a Miller grill. Yeah, you know? yeah, well, and that's what, it, you've got that, that race look. But the Brookfields don't come this chopped, you had to chop it this. No, they, they, they come a stock height, uh, and uh, we chopped it, but one of the things here, we did lean it back a little bit, uh -huh. which for Bonneville makes sense. Yeah, because you got uh, some more aerodynamics. Because the 32 windshield's pretty upright. And your louvered uh, cover here, I think that looks great. Yeah, it's uh, the insert that is is just a big hole there, actually, in a 32. And and uh, a lot of street rotters would put a flat piece of metal, but this is actually a removable panel. Mega uh, sunroof. Makes a great sunroof. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it can be done open or closed. And same back here with the, the louvered trunk, a great look there. Yeah, yeah the, the, the trunk is um, a regular trunk really with a panel over it. Looks like it has six quarter turn fasteners which keep it down but it's just the two bottom ones there and uh, so it just completes the look really. Yeah so you've got your you know for cross country trips you've got your gasoline and your water with you and a six volt system? No it, it looks like a six volt battery this is really a 12 volt battery. Well let's look at your 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 interior which I'm sure is equally luxurious. I mean after uh, all it's a Bonneville car you course, know they were of course they were always loaded up with interior. Well you drive across country you know you got to make sure you have all the creature comforts. That's right <laughs> and you do you take this baby you drove this thing to uh, Vegas right? Absolutely. Bomber seats, mismatched bomber seats. Yeah, the uh, most guys don't want one because they're they want to have two that match in their car. So and, and it, was, it was easier to come by two that don't <laughs> match because the guys I th that I got them from actually didn't want because they were they didn't match. Yeah, a Ludwig Ludwig uh, uh, bass drum yep, pedal. Yeah, bass drum pedal. What what's your spe speedo? That's a it's, mega speedo. It's a it's a neat cluster. The uh, it comes out of a Mack truck. So let's let's have a look at the engine. All right. Flathead, of course. Flathead, Ford's finest. A little bit of souping up. Um, it actually has um, a like supercharger a on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Is that a, a period. That's a Scott. Or that's a, a Scott. It's it's a, actually an Atal Mechanica, which is a predecessor to the uh -huh. Scott. Same company, basically. Vintage Hildebrand. How about the heads, though? 
Well, the heads are brand new sharp heads. In fact, they were kind of polished. <laughs> <laughs> it took care of that though, and, didn't uh, it? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a, a, every metal takes a different acid to oxidize it, to, which obviously makes it look old. And mm -hmm. so you just have to have the right one for the right metal. It's steel, aluminum, and, and copper, and brass all take a different one. So you just you just antique them up and they look yeah. Your, your your carbs though they're what are those the Strombergs right? Yeah, the, those are brand new Strombergs. How about the air cleaner? I like that's cool. The, the teardrop aluminum piece is a is really a candy dish from a discount store. <laughs> uh, Another I, found item. Found item. <laughs> well, this this baby runs great. You drove it all the way from Cincinnati to Las Vegas um, and and back. I'm assuming. Yeah. But, you know, can we can we drive it around today? Absolutely. Can I drive it Love around to. today? I, absolutely. Uh, Let's do it. Let's fire this baby up. Welcome back to My Classic Car. How long did it take you to build this one? This was a pretty quick build. This, this was really uh, a nine month build. And did you do the chop in your shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, you laid uh, the windshield back just a bit? Yeah. So of course you've got Dynamat throughout this thing, or we wouldn't be hearing each other right yes, now, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it would be unbearable without <laughs> Dynamat. Uh, and even the, the Dynaliner really helps without the echo up here. You gotta figure out where all the levers are on this guy. Flip, 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 <laughs> spin, <laughs> pull, <laughs> spin. Right to high tech car. <laughs> you have to be ambidextrous to drive this thing. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's not quite the solid rock that the Roadster is. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, this is more. This is a hot rod, and this drives like a hot rod. Yeah. Amazing, and these are Tremec five speeds, right? Yeah. What a nice transmission to put in something like this. Yeah, and in fact, it's this is a perfect transmission for a, a flathead. A flathead's so torquey. Yeah. Like when you're out on the highway and you're climbing, you're going up hills on the expressway, like Tennessee, that kind of thing. You know, you're climbing a hill, and uh, you don't have to downshift. The, the engine's real torquey. You, can, I mean, you're just you're five speed in your way down the expressway. Still ahead, we'll check out the Dynasport Roadster in Hamilton, Ohio. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, man, that was a blast. I'm that glad you enjoyed it. Dyn Lighter is, it runs great and it's surprisingly quiet. Yeah, well, that's what I do. That is what you do, less, yeah. less noise, right? <laughs> but you know, you made that car almost to look gnarly, to look nasty. But you made this car to look fabulous. And, and, and Scott, I gotta tell you, this is one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. When I saw this car first time, it stopped me in my tracks. Well, that means a lot to me, oh, coming from you especially. It's just beautiful. Now, this is another one that, I mean, you created this thing kind of, you know, to be different and, and, and out of your, your head, but it's another Brookville body, right? Yes, it's a Brookville Roadster, and except for the wheel wells from here back, it's pre a stock Roadster. And then wild job on the on, on the wishbones here, because with these big tires, when it, and I even felt it on the coupe, you don't have a heck of a turning radius before you no, bang into no. those. That's, but that's, you dished these in. Yeah, that's the steering uh, lock on the coupe is hitting the split wishbones. Radiusing those means you get more turning radius, mm -hmm. but it also looks beautiful. Oh, it's it fabulous. Just, it just goes with the car, and, and of course, one, and on this side, we have to radius the uh, drag link, which is a, a feet in itself to make sure that that doesn't um, you know bend because yeah. now it's not as strong yeah, yeah. so there's a, some techniques on doing that that's a little it's not just a tube and you know when you first look at this car you go okay it's black white with a with a trim of green in there but if but if you look close that's not black that is a deep deep metallic green it's not black it's, it's not black it's so green <laughs> that it's black it's it's a it's a uh, called jade black it's a newer Mercedes color, which maybe shouldn't belong on a vintage looking car, but it works. Man, and, and when you get it out in the light, then you can really see that, that metallic green. And again, it just, it just sets it off. Your hinges too, 
I think are a nice detail. Did you have to do something special to that? Or they Just polish them. Uh, the Brookville bodies, uh, they come with uh, brass hinges. Most people paint them or chrome plate them, I think or, they look... or a lot of guys don't cut them off and put a hidden hinge. They look uh, great polished though. Oh, it's, that with the copper rivets on the, yeah. and the aluminum on the car, it kind of just goes with everything. The uh, little wind screens? Brooklyn's aero screens, like on British racing cars. But this, I mean, is this Ferrari? Here? Yeah, Ferrari steering wheel. Everything's, you know, there's a lot of mid 50 sports car stuff going on here, yeah. you know, and it, it, trying to be convincing and true to the car, um, that kind of stuff works. Triumph TR3 dashboard. It, you know, I was wondering if that wasn't Triumph. What's the yep. center button though? The center knob? Yep. That... Uh, well, you know, these, these knobs are Porsche and Volkswagen. In fact, this is where a choke pull might be on a British car but it's a Volkswagen heater knob, <laughs> and it's the ignition key. <laughs> I like that, but your fairing here, I think is what almost makes this car from a style standpoint. It just gives it that really sleek, high speed yeah, look. It's, it's kind of the icing on the cake. Yeah, it this, is. this is not being a metal former. Uh, this was built in uh, Posey's shop in Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. Well, he's good. <laughs> yeah, he, do they do some really outlandish stuff there. And your wheels are incredible. I mean, these, first of all, these things are huge. The, those are really like for vintage race cars, you know, Coker makes the tires. The problem is getting wheels for uh -huh. modern cars that work with those tires. And I'll bet there's no flathead in this. No, no flathead, but again, trying to take new things and make them appear to be truly vintage. Uh -huh. You know, the engine had to have the same kind of treatment. Yeah. And, and I really, I hate to tell anybody what this is. I, I'd rather show it to you because it's, it's kind of misleading if I tell you. Uh, of course, it's misleading if I show you. <laughs> Continental Mark II? Yeah, there's a 56 Mark II valve covers, and there actually are the valve covers. That there's not over another one. There's on a spacer, but it's not a Mark II engine. It's channeled up underneath, so you, it, you know, it sits down low over the carburetor, and uh, there's a few things going on under there. It appears as though the distributor's in the back on this engine, Which like it would be on, a, on the Mark yeah. II. But uh, those are just real long plug wires because they come up to the front on the distributor because it's a later model Ford 302, <laughs> punched out to 347, dynoed at 440 horsepower on race fuel and Holy 400 foot pounds of torque. Holy mackerel. On now a car you understand the frame being so uh, <laughs> better be, solidly mounted. Better be beefy. Well, you know, uh, the, the dyno liner was a blast to drive, but this has got to be just just phenomenal. Can we take this it's out? It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, exhilarating. <laughs> well, let's let's get excited. Okay, I can't Can wait. I drive it again? Absolutely. Oh, all right. Let's do it. Close her up. No, I can't wait. Stay close. We'll hit the road in the awesome Dynasport Roadster. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Got to get down in this thing, don't you? Got to get yeah. down. <laughs> get down and get funky. <laughs> get down, get funky. When did you start building cars? Well, I started doing BMW stuff, uh, like in the seventies. I mean, nobody was doing. Nobody even knew what BMW was well, in the seventies. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so a little two thousand two BMWs, you know. Um, the first one was uh, actually a 68. So you're, I mean, that, that's not really the conventional hot rod approach. I mean, you were, you were playing with German sports cars, yeah. German performance sedans. Because it's, it's just one of those things where, hey, nobody's got one of these, and I found this one that doesn't run, and this guy's willing to unload it cheap. So All the ingredients, right? Yeah. What kind of reaction do you find to this car? Because this thing is a little bit out there. It's a mixed bag really because yeah you have some guys who consider themselves traditional purists if you will that think it's too fancy. The best compliment I probably ever got was um, you know a guy who walks up and says is this a re uh, not a, re a restoration. The guy so, says is this a restoration <laughs> you know and uh, that's a compliment. I'll say. Oh man, what a day. I've had a blast. Scott builds some fabulous cars. Scott, you know, I feel good in this one. You think we can work something out here? I think we can make a deal. We can make a deal. Yeah. We're going to talk. Next week, we'll travel to Lakeland, Florida for the Lake Mirror Classic. 
This picturesque Florida town with its centerpiece lake hosts an incredible gathering of classics, customs, hot rods, and even boats. Plus, we'll look at wheel and tire combinations for hot rods and collector cars. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Cage. Happy motoring.